All right. Well, welcome everybody to today's class. We're going to be talking about um, holiday marketing, but we're also going to be doing kind of a uh, quick start and how to get started with email marketing. So I'm using Constant Contact to do email marketing. Uh, it's the program that I'm uh, a partner with, and I'm also just very familiar with it. Um, you can be using just about any email marketing program will work as long as you're using something. So that's what I always tell people. But I really do like Constant Contact. It's really easy to use, and it's got all sorts of fun bells and whistles lately um, that I'll share some of those with you. Um, so generally what I do, actually, I usually come in here to start an email, but now also there's this lovely little create button, and that gives you an idea of all the different things that are available to create when you start creating. Um, yesterday, I did a class with someone, Vicki, who talked about um, events marketing, and uh, you can do email marketing, as we've talked about, and you can do automated marketing, you can set up advertising, um, you can create a whole marketing plan within here, you can do social posts, um, landing pages, uh, social uh, SMS marketing, texting, um, you can create sign-up forms, and you can create surveys. So. This is quite a lot of opportunity to do different kinds of um, things within one platform. Um, it's really, as I've, someone reached out to me yesterday and was like, hey, can you help me with Facebook ads? And I was like, well, what do you want to actually do? And, you know, after talking a little bit, I realized this program would just be fantastic for them because really what they want to do is get an email marketing program up and running. Um, they're, they'll have so much more success, especially with my assistance. So let's say I'm gonna start off with an email, just I'm going to create a newsletter. Now, the great thing about creating a newsletter is that you can create something and then that can be a piece of content um, later on uh, to do all sorts of things with, because a newsletter goes out via email to people, but it also then is archived as a web page, And so that can be used as a web page. It can be used as, um, content for social media. It can be used as content um, just all over the place. So there's really just endless amounts of ways that these types of um, uh, communication or content can be uh, used. Why don't we start with somebody um, put in the chat the type of business that you are, or we could do a holiday. So if you wanna pick a holiday, um, maybe one of the ones that's coming up, Cyber Monday or Giving Tuesday or Small Business Saturday. So somebody, there we go. Somebody somebody played along. Thank you. Alternative health. Very good. So I'm guessing that there isn't an actual, uh, that there isn't a template for alternative health, but I'm guessing that there is just under the health um, area. So let's see. Why don't we, let's just pick this one over here. I'm going to pick a template. And that's one way to start. You can also start by um, doing, you know, there's other ways to begin as well. You can just also start from scratch and, and like that. So I'm going to give this a title. And this is just something that I'm going to see. All right, new folks are um, jumping in, so I'm gonna let them in. So yeah, for those people who are just joining, we're talking about getting started with an email um, newsletter for alternative health. So the first step that I usually do is I come in here to the email settings. This is currently what this is gonna look like when someone gets it in their email inbox. There's a subject line, there's a pre-header text, and then there's a from name, and then there's who it's coming from, and then also who the people can reply to. The key thing here is to remember that your subject line really is, you have basically two uh, seconds and two words for someone to open your 
email. So that's the two by two by two uh, theory. Um, some key things to think about if you want people to open your message is using the word you, your, um, video, Facebook, um, using people's names. So if you use the personalization feature here, that is something that also will help um, people think that there's some actual connection between you and them. The These two pieces, the subject line and the preheader go away. Once you um, send the email or when someone opens it, your name is key. Okay. So those are some things to consider when you're doing your subject line. Then right off the bat, you know, here we've been given this image. Uh, we've got some more imagery. We've got some more imagery. And then down here, you've got your call to action, which is a scheduling an appointment. Hours, location, all good stuff. Um, some other things that one might consider, let's get rid of this just to give us some space to work. Um, it, it are things like the social share feature, which is out there now. This allows someone to, um, sh when they see your email, to uh, share the email on social media. Um, another thing that one might consider is adding a view in a browser button. So the way to do that is I get rid of everything in a text box and I put in insert um, view as a web page. And then what that means is that's going to allow a person to open this up as a web page, as opposed to looking at it as uh, what something in their e inbox. So that's a nice thing to add as are these. These are called in a way, um, you know, somebody else doing the marketing for you you know, and helping spread the word about whatever it is you're doing. Um, some other things to consider at this point might be a divider um, that can kind of separate sections. Um, something else now, uh, the next thing that I would consider doing is adding in just some straight text. So um, I like to personalize things. I would delete all of that and then I would add in um, a greeting tag. So hello, first name comma, and then the backup greeting is going to be this greetings uh, word. So that's how that would look. Then I might do things like change the font. Um, and then let's say I'll find some text somewhere. Let me just grab some text. So here's some text that I might share. Again, it didn't grab the the formatting that I wanted it to. So I'll just adjust that. Um, some other things to think about at this point are the line spacing. Maybe you wanna make it a little bit easier to read by spacing the lines out a little bit. Maybe you want to change the um, text so that it's all black. Um, you can do things now to, um, maybe you wanna make this a link to that web page. Um, let's say it's, you're trying to get it to this web page. So like that, another fun new tool is this enable, um, click segmentation. What that does is allows a person to click on a link and then they are directed to whatever link that they are going to, but they are added to a new email list within your uh, program. So you can even create a list at this point to send new people to a particular list. And that's called email segmentation as well. So that is how that works. Um, I'm gonna probably change this so that it looks more like a link. Could also perhaps underline this to make sure that people understand that it's a link. So that's a little bit of that. Um, some other things to consider might be changing your design. So your outer background, instead of it being purple, maybe you want it white, or maybe you want it to be, have some uh, feeling to it. Maybe you want to use your own imagery and you know have a background of something fun like that. It's really up to you. 
Um, but you can upload, for instance, uh, you can add, uh, let's say, I'm not sure. Oh, I have this image of Portland. What it'll do is it'll tile this image. And so now you can see, well, no, it did kind of a nice job of making it look somewhat like it's using that as the background. So there's all sorts of things that you can do um, color and image wise. Um, we talked about images a moment ago. Let me see. So the, here's an image. Um, I can replace this image with something else. Oh, it gave me some choices. That's fun. So that's neat. It, it gave me some other choices right from within the template itself. That's new. I didn't know that it could do that. Um, and then I talked a little bit about design a moment ago, but you can come in here and you can um, change the layout of the design so that instead of you know having the colors be, well, I don't like this purple, so now I can actually click on undo and go back to what it was. But you can do all sorts of fun things like change the various um, colors, uh, the fonts. So you can do things like universally change uh, the body text, for instance, I didn't like that body text. I'll change globally to Ariel and globally to black and body links. I'm going to make uh, this purple. So now up here, it changed it to the purple and it made sure that all of the text is um, that black. So I'm going to share with you. Uh, oh, okay. For the new people, I just wanted to share the links that I had um, shared with everybody when we got started. Those are those. If you want to keep in touch or find out about my future classes. Anyway, so now we, um, we've we got an email. Uh, we've, we've done some building. Um, you can also use these um, nice, you know, pre-selected things, um, coupons, three columns, two columns divided. Um, this is also a new section that uh, I've been playing with a little bit. And what it is, is, let's see. Uh, it's not letting me do that. Not sure why. Um, but the idea is that you can do new blocks are available to um, create things with kind of uh, just a, a real different look and feel than they used to uh, be available. Um, another thing to know about is, uh, let's say you want to include uh, read more. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is a wonderful feature. I love this. This is, um, if I've got an article, I can then put the uh, website in there. I'm just going to throw this website in there. I'm not sure how it's actually going to look, but you get a picture and you can make the picture bigger or smaller. You get um, the title from the website. You can actually adjust this. You can also adjust the text that it gives you and you can also adjust the button. So let's say you want the button to be purple um, or red or whatever it is. So that's a really fun feature called read more um, and there's also things like you can add data tables, you can add a link to an event, you can create a small poll. This is a great way to um, decide whether or not, you know, give people choices, yes, no, or, you know, you can even add more, I think, as well. You can edit the poll and add more questions, maybe, or chocolate. I, I love adding chocolate to anything, so... So now you can see, you know, a person's going to possibly respond to this. And that's another way to segment your list is to find out if people are interested in what you're talking about or, you know, whatever it is. So now we've done a bunch of editing. Uh, I've showed you a couple of the things. Another thing that's very typical is people putting videos in their email. That's really simple. So I'll just demo that as well. So there's an, there is a video. And let's see if I can find a video uh, link for you. Okay, here's one. So basically, you would just click on the video link, 
and click edit, open that up, put in your video, and then boom, you've got a link to a video. And so, and, and again, you can make that bigger or smaller like that. And then you've got your email. So we've done this, the personalization, which is, again, you could use that anywhere in your email. You can even say uh, something like, by um, and then put a person's first name in again, if you wanted to. I've never done that before, but um, that's a possibility. And just skip that and maybe do this. And that would be like that. So that would just say by first name <laughs> like that. Um, anyway, so now we've done a bunch of um, formatting and we're about 20 minutes in. So let me just finish this up with, you know, some of the things I would do next would be checking for errors. And I've probably left some links out but it gives you some notes about different things that you can do differently. Um, and then I might uh, preview it and just see, okay, what is this going to look like on my desktop? Okay, it's going to look like that. And what's it going to look like on mobile? It's going to look like that. Very nice. And then after that, I might send myself a test. In fact, I'm sure I would send myself a test and, and I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see, now in my inbox, what that looks like um, once it gets here. So Albert Kaufman, two seconds and two words. Oh, that looks interesting. I think I'll open that up. And now here's what the email looks like in my inbox. So isn't that fun? All in just 20 minutes, um, including time to talk to you. <laughs> so that's a little bit of that. And then next step is I would click on continue. And I would click on, um, I might do, well, first of all, I would pick who, what list I'm gonna send it to or what segment I have. Um, I might use this resend to non-openers tool, which allows me to send to a group uh, that hasn't opened the email yet, you know, on the next day or whenever I want to, I can send this you know, on a different time, on a different day. So right now this would be three days later at 1030 in the morning, but maybe I want to try to catch the early risers. Um, and then I might say it's something a little different. I might change the subject line. And now I click confirm. Um, I might double check my subject line in my preheader and just double check and make sure everything looks good. And then I can either schedule for later or I can send now. Another thing that's fun is using the A-B test. And what that does is allows me to check two different subject lines and whichever subject line wins after a certain amount of time, everybody else that hasn't gotten it yet gets that email. So now I click on send now and the email goes out. And then once the email goes out, this is gonna send me to a page that's going to give me a, a URL. And this is what I talked about when we first started the class today, which was that you can repurpose the information um, that you make in all sorts of different ways. So one way is, <clears throat> uh, let's see up here, I can do all sorts of different things, but I wanted to show you the, once it's sent, I can then share it on social media. Actually, though, I can just copy that link. Usually I keep track of the links that of things that I send. And let me just refresh the screen. Um, also, something that you might, you might consider doing here is copying it over and having it be um, ready for, uh, you know, reusing if you like the template that you've used. So then um i can go down here i can share on social media um and right from within constant contact which is really cool i don't think i've set up this for sharing on this account but this is basically how it would work um i would connect an account 
let's see i'll just connect to facebook my facebook hopefully it will just be a seamless no it's not a seamless experience okay so we'll do this another time but basically once you've connected your social media accounts you can then quickly send the email to <clears throat> um your facebook accounts your uh Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So I used that, in fact, earlier today to encourage people to come to today's class. So that's that's that. Um, just a couple of, so you can use it in that way. You can also just email it out to people. You can take this link and post it yourself on social media. So I can show you how that works. If I just wanted to say, because actually the the um, social share thing within Constant Contact doesn't allow you to share to your own personal page. But if I wanted to share to my personal page, I could just share that e that link like that. And normally what it'll do is after some time, it'll pick up uh, the, let's see if it'll do that. I can at least show you what that will look like. So right now it's just showing this link, but normally it would pick up um, the it would pick up the pro, the preview of um, of whatever it is that it was sharing. So I'm not going to belabor the point, but that is normally how that would work. Um, and then after that, I might go looking at the reporting and see you know how things went um, and take a look, for instance. Um, I, here I am looking at the reporting of emails that I've sent recently, and you can see I've had a very high open rate. I was sending, using this account, I was sending to a very small group of people, but they were very interested in what I had to say at the time. So another, you know, all sorts of different ways to look at the reporting on what you're doing. Uh, I see someone's asked a question in the chat. So posting the link will go to all my contacts. Um, actually, so the answer is it will go to the contacts that you have chosen. You you choose lists when you're about to send of who you're going to send to. So in, for instance, the email I just sent, I just sent to one person, me. I've created a list called me so I can test things out. Um, but anyway, you can look at this reporting and you can see really specifically who opened things. Um, here I had an open rate of 100%. That's kind of amazing. Um, uh, and yeah, you can also look at it this way. Here's the demo that I just did. And if I opened it, it would so also show hundred percent open rate. Um, oh, I see. I had hundred percent because I just sent it to one person. All right. But still I had 93% open rate when I sent to 130 people. And I was sending an email to city council and mayoral candidates recently. And so they, I guess, were interested in what I had to say. So there you go. That's a little bit of the reporting. Um, we've done an email. We're 27 minutes in, and I will go ahead and uh, why don't I first, if you have a question that is um, clear that has to do with constant contact and me demoing something, if you want to put it in the chat, then I can just keep going or I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Oh, you know what? I forgot to record. Oh, no, I didn't. I did not. Anyway, I will stop the recording. Thank you so much for uh, participating. I'll pause the recording thing. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming today, and I look forward to presenting to you at a future date. Thank you. Thanks, Patty, for being here.